Alright, alright, alright. Let's see if this thing's working now. No sound. We have sound. We have sound. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, one, two, one, two. <laughs> Do we have sound? Do we have sound? I hope so. So, this is called, the title is Creating Healthy Habits. And a healthy habit, in my opinion now, this is based off my own experiences, is one that um, is for the greatest good of myself, which will be for the greatest good of all. It's one that helps me to feel good. It's one that helps me to see clearly. It's one that helps me to hear clearly. It'd be one that um, helps me physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all those, right? Uh-oh, I'll just tag some people up. Normally don't even tag Margaret. Okay, boom. Okay, yep. Can you hear me tender in the heart? Because earlier I got cut off from sound. And uh, maybe give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. If you can't, let me know too. We'll, we'll try this thing again. I cut the top knot off. Came back. Looking Devier. Awesome. Good to see you, Tender. Good to see you, Brandon. What's up, brother? Brother, brother, brother. I, uh, the title was strange because, wasn't strange. So I played that song and I came on and the name of that song by the movement was uh, Habit or Habits. And um, <laughs> the title of this is Creating Healthy Habits. <laughs> and a habit would be a pattern, right? It would be, yeah, it, it'd be a pattern. And we have the power of consciousness so and that is a power we're conscious we're conscious of things you know once I become aware that a pattern or a habit is not serving my greatest good I may become depressed I may not feel good it's lowered my vibration it's slowered my vibration it's lowered my frequency my energy it's brought me down, let's say. Um, it may not be for the greatest good of my physical health. Like, if I came home every day and at lunch and, at, and then I came home at dinner and I ate a quart of ice cream every day, and I, which is full of sugar, and I drank Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper all day every day, which is full of sugar, for me, that would not be for my greatest good, and I would probably start to not feel so well. I know I would get indigestion. I know I would probably be um, overweight. Um, I would feel sluggish. I've done these things and I'm, I'm talking, let me put this disclaimer out there. What I'm sharing today is based off of experience. I've read some books on neuroplasticity and, and, and the way uh, repetition works, but I first found out through experience. And, and I, so I've experienced some things in my life. Now, the thing about a pattern or a habit is we can create healthy habits, patterns in our lives. We can create unhealthy habits and patterns in our lives. We have the power to consciously choose to do either one. So here, here, yep, 3.5 trillion volts, yep. I heard 700 trillion volts of electricity, but hey, 50 trillion cells. I think uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton says 50 trillion cells, and I heard uh, um, David uh, David Carson say 35 million or trillion cells. So, and then each cell carries somewhere around 1.4 volts of electricity, and. Uh, when all working in harmony and unison to the one sound, the one voice, the one idea, which all taps into tapping into 100% of your vascular system that carries oxygen and carries um, thought and idea to every cell. And, once, and when you tap into that and we're, we're in harmony because we have clarity of image, then we're 
tapping into using the full potential and operating that full potential of this advanced technology that we are. <clears throat> so, you know, however many volts of electricity that is, it is, it's a lot. <laughs> I would call that uh, what the Bible called dunamis power. Bam! Zapping people, you know. And uh, I believe that's how healing works is we're channeling our own energy, right? Energy, energy, inner God, energy, electricity, movement, vibration, frequency, light, electricity, right? And we're also able to project images, right? But that's way off topic for me today. What I really wanted to, to talk about is the power to choose and the power to believe and the power to, to use your own self-control you could call it your own discipline the power to choose each and every day for instance um my friend tim and her heart on here i know she's been doing a course in miracles well she has chosen to do that each and every day through her power the power of consciousness she's chosen to do that why would anybody choose to do that well to serve my greatest good to have a clearer image of myself maybe to hear my inner voice more clearly, to feel and sense energies, energy, become more sensitive to those things. When I'm doing certain things and I've created certain habits that I would deem unhealthy, it doles out those things. It doles out my antenna. I don't hear as clearly. I still hear, but I don't see and I don't hear as clearly. It fogs me. It fogs my mind, it fogs my brain, it fogs my body. I'm not running and operating at full capacity because either I'm putting things into my body that aren't serving my greatest good, or I'm doing things every day that are not helping me. You know? And it may be there may there's multiple reasons we do certain things. I'll tell you about a habit I got into. So from age 12 till 36, I drank and drugged, hardcore. I started, um, started off by peer pressure because of I feared being rejected and, uh, and being abandoned and being alone. And so I was very susceptible, I had a low self-esteem. Although I was very, very, very good at sports, I was very popular at school, I think I'm a pretty good looking guy. You know, I had girlfriends and stuff and, and friends. Um, I had a low self esteem. I, I had something happen to me when I was, I don't even know how old I was, maybe four, maybe five. I, I, I can't remember the exact age. But I had a homosexual act happen to me. And, um, you know, at that age, you don't know, you don't know what, you know. And, and But the thing that was traumatic for me was not the, the act that took place. It was, and this is, this is where it gets real crazy. This is why you can't really trust your memory because it's distorted. So I remembered my stepdad walking in and blessing us out. And that was traumatic for me. And then I remember standing in a tub, being, you know, blessed out, cursed and everything, and, and with soap in our mouths, naked. Um, that's what I remember. I later found out at age 30, no, <laughs> just a couple years ago. <laughs> that's the way I remembered it my whole life. Nuts. I later found out it wasn't my stepdad, it was my mom. So somewhere in my mind, the memory was changed for me to remember it being my dad versus my mom. Why that happened, I'm not real sure. Some of you may have a better idea than me. All I know is it switched it on me, and that's the way I remembered it. And I did not find out what truly went down until I was like 43 years old. And so the memory was not true. It's not even what really happened. But that, that event affected me my entire life. So... Starting at about age 12, I started drinking because I got peer pressured into drinking. Now, I used to hear the voice so clearly as a child. Which way to go? Which path to take in the woods? Um, the people that I needed to go hang out with? 
the people that I didn't need to go hang out with. You know, different things like that. Go over there, Alec. Don't go over there. And I used to follow it so clearly. But when that happened to me, I began to feel different. I didn't, I didn't feel like everyone else. I, even around family, I felt alone. Like I was different, like everybody knew. And there was something wrong with me, right? So through that, things like my, my self-esteem became very low. Um, I began to identify with the event that happened to me. And, and, and so I was very easily persuaded because I didn't want to be rejected. I didn't want to be abandoned. And, and lots of things played into that. Divorce, a biological dad not being around ever, you know, things like that. Not feeling like I measured up. Know, not having my dad, my biological dad, at my sporting events. When he would show up, I would really go off. You know, I would, I would really just have these extremely good games and things. You know, and, and because that feeling of not measuring up, that I had to, I had to do better. Sorry about that. I had to do better so that my dad would notice me. And, and all that played a role. So I started drinking and, and drugging at age 12, and it went on to age 36. And the more that I went against the voice within me, the duller it became. The easier it became not to listen to it and just to go off and do these things. Now, I would wake up feeling horrible, you know, after doing things. I, even during, sometimes I would be like, oh, I don't need to be doing this. You know, it just, it amazed me at the people that could just do it and seem to not be affected by, by the, the things that we were doing. And so over years, so I, I created, this went on for years, I created a very unhealthy habit, probably because I didn't want to deal with the pain and I couldn't. I, did, I had no idea how to deal with the emotional pain. And because, you know, we're taught that certain feelings and emotions as men, you know, you know, like crying, you know, you're, you're told to stop crying and, and like anger, you're told it's bad and, and, and certain feelings, frustration, you know, when you get frustrated at a, at a child and your parents get frustrated at, at you, at the child. The child is having a hard time communicating how they feel and the parent gets frustrated. Well, that's teaching the child to resist those feelings and in the resistance we suppress those feelings and we oppress those feelings. And the, and the feelings, the memory becomes trapped in the body and in the lowest parts of our earth. The limiting thoughts and beliefs and memory, you know? And, hey Donald, <laughs> I love you too. And, and so these things were going on. So I created, now I chose, nobody forced me, but because of my own, my own low self-esteem, and as a child, the things that happened to me that I wasn't seeing clearly, the way I perceived it, you know, as, as, as you know, I wasn't really an outcast. I wasn't really alone. I, I wasn't really different. But those thoughts, you know, those thoughts because of what had happened to me were ruling my life. And, and so over all this time, I created this very unhealthy habit of over drinking to the point where I would black out and, and drug, drug it. I, you know, I, I did all kinds of drugs and things. All because I was self-medicating. I, I was a little boy stuck in a grown man's body <laughs> emotionally. And, and, but down deep, 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 deep within me, there was a cry, I was being reminded. There was, a, there was these questions that were bubbling up from within me that I didn't really tell anybody about during this time. There's got to be more meaning to life. There has to be more purpose. But I just couldn't stop doing what I was doing. Now, there's lots of science out that, that, that talks about endorphins and, and dopamines and, and, and all those things that, that my body was producing chemicals. I'd become addicted to the chemicals and and. And so the body was running my life. When I needed a fix, it knew how to create a problem that would trigger me and I'd go out and get my fix. Same thing happens with people that, that grew up in very traumatic and dramatic uh, family environments. 
they they become addicted to the drama. They're not addicted, so to speak, to the drama taking place and the trauma. They're addicted to the chemicals their body produces. Their body's addicted. The body's running the show. So the body goes into flight and fight, you know, and it produces all these chemicals that it has actually become addicted to. And so, and so when it needs its fix, it will create a problem. It will project something upon someone else. You will project something upon someone else to start a fight. To create the drama that you need, the body needs to get its fix from the chemicals. Now, most people aren't aware of this. And the question remains within me is can you consciously decide to make that change if you're not aware of it? I don't believe you can. So who brings the awareness? Where does that come from? It comes from you. It, come, it comes from your authentic self. Where do the questions come from if not you? You. That divine being child, the observer within, you, that energy, that inner chi, that inner God, that source, that is you. So the questions start bubbling up within me over these years. Who am I? There has to be more meaning and purpose to life than the way I'm living. What is the purpose of life? This can't be it. If this is it, I'm checking out. I don't want it anymore. It's boring. I, I became bored with doing the same thing every day. Wake up. Now, in, in, my, in my 30s, I became very bored with it. I had to find new things, new ways of having sex, new sports, more, more adrenaline, new, more fights, um, harder drinking, harder drugs. But all of it lost its taste. It had all become very dull to me. And I became very bored with life, period. And I said, this can't, this can't be it. Inside now, what's the real meaning of life, Alan? What's the purpose? This can't be your purpose. Who are you anyway? And all the time I'm running around hiding and masking and having a different face and, and, and that's called a personality now persona is a mask persona is a mask it's an illusion all the time I'm running around acting and behaving like another's image not being my authentic unique self I had a mask for my family I had a mask for church people I had a mask for um, my rugby buddies I had a mask for my party friends I had a mask for my girlfriend I had, a ma I had a mask for my, my dad. I had a mask for my mom. I had a mask for my grandparents. I had a mask for business. I had a mask for everybody. I was playing a part in a role that I had been taught and that I had thought, and it was another's image. All the time not knowing who the hell I was. Not knowing what the purpose and meaning of life was. And then, and so that heart cry began to go out. Now we know that when your heart, when you start to ask those questions, what's the purpose of life? The answer's coming. That sound, that vibration that's coming out of your heart, that's a declaration. That is your proclamation. It is, that is the rhema word, the sound. And things start to align. It may not happen suddenly. It may happen suddenly. It may happen over time. But that heart desire, what is the meaning of life? Who am I? Who is everybody else? What's the purpose? That question, that sound went out into the universe, and the universe began to align in my favor. And at age 36, this went on from 12 to 36. At age 36, when I had basically got into the last house on the block and I felt like there was no one I could call 
and things didn't align. I had met a man through a girl that I was chasing that had moved in with me, who started having these little church meetings in my house, who had bought me a Bible that sat on my table that I dusted off so they thought I read it when they would come in. And I would act like I knew what they were talking about. And then one day, and then one day, I acknowledged that I that, that I had I had a problem. I acknowledged that I was ignorant. And I said, I can't even I can't even sit with y'all and talk about this stuff anymore. I'm I'm ignorant. I, you know, I've never read that book. I don't want to read it. I have no desire and I can't even understand it. What happened after that is one night that group that was coming and meeting at my house, the leader, something had happened, he couldn't make it. We had to go meet at another place. We met with another man. The very questions I'd been answering, that I'd been asking that night, I got bombarded with it, the answer. I, I mean, it hit me so hard. That man stood in front of us and he said, the first thing that came out of his mouth when he looked at us, he said, do you hear, do you hear God's voice? God and it went in me and that voice started speaking to me from from within and I, and I kept hearing how's he hearing God how's he hearing God's voice how come I'm not hearing God's voice how does how is he hearing and I'm why how come I'm not here you know what what's he doing inside me over and over and over again and I knew something was happening because I asked him afterwards how and he told me he told me he was reading the Bible and he was journaling and he was meeting with another man to help him see the common thread God was speaking to him through the scriptures and God was speaking to him through um, each scripture he'd written down there was a common thread it was very interesting to me but I was so offended at, who knows, people at church, at the Bible, because I, you know, I didn't understand it. Whatever, you know, I don't know, but I was offended. And it made me mad, and I told, and I told the man, I said, that's that's interesting, but I'm not interested. And I, you know, I was 225 pounds back then. I was taking steroids, lifting weights like crazy, playing rugby, partying my ass off. I was a big, mean-looking dude. And I said, I'm not interested. I was angry. And I said, I don't have the time. I, I, I got all this other stuff I'm doing. I don't even want to read it, man. I don't have a desire to read that book. And I don't understand it. I tried it one time, and I got about a half page down. I couldn't understand it. And this man was wise. He said, well, can you just start waking up? Here's the healthy habits. This is part of it. Can you just start waking up five minutes before you run out the door? And can you just say three little prayers each and every morning? Repetition. Asking. Can you just wake up five minutes early and say three little prayers? I said, man, I can do that. I think I can do that. See, that was easy for me. And he didn't know how hurt I was and how deeply I was searching for something. I didn't want anybody to know. I was scared to admit that I was jacked up because of the guilt, the shame, and the remorse, you know, and the judgment and the accusations, you know, and fear of rejection, being alone, all those things, not being loved. And I said, sure, I can do that. He said, can you, can you do this? 
just wake up five minutes early, man. And can you just say, um, God, will you give me the desire? And will you give me the time? And will you give me the understanding? I said, yeah, I can do that. That's pretty easy. And I, and I did. I began to do that every morning. And within about a week or two weeks of this prayer, I was in the gym and I was working out by myself, lifting way too much weight by myself. I think I had 110 pound dumbbells and I was bench pressing. And one of them got away from me and ripped my shoulder, tore it. I've got the scar from the surgery. And I was, and then I continued to play rugby went out and I, and I ripped it worse and I ended up having to have surgery I was laid up for about a month and out of nowhere that little prayer I'd been saying the desire I started wanting to read that Bible and everything that man explained started happening I started hearing I started writing it down and I started doing this repetitiously See, we can, we can create habits and patterns through using our power of consciousness to choose, decide, and believe. And, and through discipline, through repetition, and through practice, we can it's either create, form, or it is change neural pathways for our greatest good. So I started to do this, and I started to devour it. Now, where that desire came from I do not think I created that desire, so to speak, consciously, I just created the desire. I believe my true self, you could say my higher self, myself, the one within, created that desire, which in turn created a habit and a pattern that was healthy for me, that ended up delivering me from all, all those things. This went on for about a year and I became miserable because I kept falling off. See, the, the body, I kept getting triggered and the body kept wanting its fix, those chemicals, you know, that, you know, to deal with the pain, to numb it, and those chemicals that were being produced, you know, when I'd fight and then I'd go numb it, and, and then I'd fight and then I'd go numb it, you know. And so I was still stuck in that pattern, although there was a new pattern coming forth. And after about a year of that, I found myself alone I went out and partied for about four days straight. And when I say party, I used to party. I'd drink until I blacked out. I'd smoke so much cocaine, I'd stay up for days. And I'd take downers, and then I'd snort coke, and then I'd drink. And then I'd take drink and take downers and snort coke. Days. And four days straight, I wound up locked in my house, scared to death. Scared to death nobody to call. I felt like I had nobody that could help me. I felt like I was, I was too scared to call anyone. I didn't want anyone knowing the condition I was in and what I was really doing behind the scenes. And in that place, it was the best place I could have ever been. And, and, and what happened from there is pretty unexplainable, but I had a d divine encounter. I had an encounter. I went into my room I said, you know, God, um, I know you're real now, and I know there's more purpose to life than the way I'm living. But if I continue to live like I'm living now, I'm killing myself right now. I'm done with life. With that life. <laughs> and something happened when I said that. I had more clarity than I ever had in my life. I saw the path I was on, I felt it, I saw it. I cringed at it. I cringed at the very thing I just said. And I heard a voice speak to me. Outside, inside, all over. Kingdoms within and without. Right? Heavens within and without. There is no in or out. It's all one and the same. And from that day, this is this is where the healthy patterns come in through repetition. At first, it will feel mechanical. 
I started to go to AA. They taught me how to pray. I was told in 30 days, now this is from my experience, within 30 days, I, I was told, pause. Whenever you feel out of sorts, whenever you feel fear, um, frustration, agitation, whenever you feel anger, whenever you feel those things, pause everything you're doing and ask God to remove those things. Pause and ask. Pause and ask. Pick up the phone and call your sponsor. Pick up the phone and call another man. Pick up the phone and call somebody. Talk about what's going on, which was very mechanical and very, that phone felt like it weighed 100 pounds at first. But the more I picked it up, the more it was, and the easier it was for me. And guess what? I couldn't even remember to pause and pray. I had to call my sponsor and he would, he would say, Alec, did you pause and pray about this? And really that meant pause and ask God to remove that fear. That, that, that was the prayer for me back then. God, please remove this fear. Please remove this anger. And then sit and it would go. Now what happens? Does it go? Does it go? Or does it transmute? Does 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 it basically, are you just basically embracing the truth? Does it transmute into love? Yes. Are you letting it go? No, you're just embracing what's true. And so through that process, in about 30 days, that became a working part of my life. Then I started to inventory every day. Man, what are the good things that happened today? Man, what, you know, who do I owe an apology to? Who, who was I maybe sideways at? I started to inventory those things very mechanical. I would write them down every day, every day, every night, every night. I'd write it down, write it down, write it down, write it down. And I'd pray. I'd write it down, write it down, and I'd pray. What was I doing through that discipline? I was creating and changing neural pathways, neuroplasticity. I was creating healthy habits healthy habits and, 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 and then it became a natural part of me it just is naturally I do it all day long it's just it just flows and goes and it, it, because it's naturally me and so over time I also learned I still didn't really know who I was so I had bought a book called Who I Am in Christ. I had seen through the scriptures that as he is, so am I. So I am as he is, right? So who is he? Because everything it says about him, and is he God? And is Yeah, okay, so who am I? Okay, that too. So everything it said about him, about Jesus, and about God, it is the same for me. There is no difference. So I said, you know, this is how it happened. I was still getting very offended. All these miracles were happening around me after that encounter. Healings, miracles, all kind of crazy stuff was happening all the way around me. Dreams and visions, I mean, you name it all, just it still happens. But I was still becoming so offended and angry all the time. And I, and I, and I was looking at, I looked at three men that I looked up to. One was, um, one was Todd White at the time. One was Dan Moeller. And one was Bill Johnson. I looked up to those men at this time of my life. And I remember Dan and Todd saying, Dan had said he, he hadn't been offended in, I forget how many years he'd been walking in non-offense. And Todd said the same thing. And then Bill, it just, just showed so much love. I could see so much love in the man. And really, and I said, what are those guys doing that I'm not doing? And I found out what they were doing. Dan said, I, I feel tied up with his value. I only preach righteousness. I only told him of his right standing. So he filled him up with value. And Todd said he only fills himself up. Sorry, another phone call. And then, and then Bill Johnson said something that was very profound to me at the time. He said, I can't afford to have anything up here, any thought up here that God does not have about me. 
And I said, well, golly. God must only think good things about me and only my value and only my, my worth, right? So I began to dig into the scriptures to see who I was. Because I saw that as he is, so am I. So everything that he is, I am. So every morning I would wake up. This is when I was in Selma, Alabama. I'd wake up from three to four. And I, and I had found a book of scriptures that, said, that, that stated who I was in Christ. I said, well, I'm in Christ. So that, that, that's who I am. So I, and I started to read every one of these scriptures in the mornings. I'd read a page every morning. And there'd always be one that jumped off the page at me or there was one that, that I had a question about or there was one that, that uh, good Lord, these text messages. I'm on a group text and it's going crazy. And, uh, and or there was one that I related to and I would write it down. And I would rewrite it in my own words. And I would even talk about it and I, and I would contemplate it all day. And, you know, and... And, and I would think about it all day long. I, I'd even sometimes carry a, carry one in my pocket so I could pull it back out. And I'd even try to remember it at times. And I, you know, until it became my own words, until I could just say it. And not not even in King James language or Bible language or none of that. My own language. And I did this for. What happened is, as I did this, in 30 days, I woke up. One morning, after about 30 days of this, and I sat up in the bed, and all that stuff I'd been reading and contemplating and chewing on and, and meditating on and thinking about and rewriting and talking about, I woke up and I felt as if everything I'd been reading was me. I, I woke up and I sat up in the bed and I said, Lord, something's happened. Something's happened to me. I feel like I'm you. I mean, I feel like I am you. And, and you are me. Now, I don't know. I don't even know how that goes down. I don't even know if that's possible. But I feel it. And I don't know how I'll, I'll ever explain this to anyone. Or if I ever need to. But something has happened to me. And I feel like I am you. And you are me. Well, now... Did that just magically happen? Or can that be scientifically proven? Through the power of consciousness, through my own conscious decision. Now all those encounters now, I can't explain some of those encounters. But once I became aware and I was, aw I was awakened, now I can choose. Now I've got a choice. Now I, I can feel. Now I can be in the present moment. Now I know when I feel uneasy. Now I can bring myself back into peace. Now I can choose to put practices and disciplines in place that I feel are for my greatest good, that are healthy, that are for the greatest good of all. Now I can take responsibility for my own life. Now I can work through the conditioning. I know it's there. I can work through it. <laughs> so over 30 days... I woke up and I felt like I was every scripture I just read. And I, and I said, I feel like I'm you. Now, how did that happen? Through discipline, through repetition, through contemplation, through words and speaking, through imagination, but mainly through discipline and repetition. Now, I didn't just read it. I devoured it. I chewed it. I consumed it. I digested it. It became part of me, which it was already. The truth was unveiled when I woke up that morning. It was already there in 30 days. So if that happened in 30 days, why not double it? So if a new neural pathway, you could say, was formed or changed or revealed in 30 days, and if that new neural pathway is not quite fixed yet meaning it's temporary how does it become fixed I continue on I continue to choose I continue to wake up every day and be thankful 
to evoke gratitude, put my feet on the ground, to make that choice. I continue to choose to be happy, to help others. I, now, now, now here recently, I've decided, they say 66 days. I, I said 60 days because I'm, I'm going off my own experience. So in, in 30 days, if I formed a new habit and I expand it and formed a new neural pathway or whatever you want to say there, whatever really breaks down there, some of you probably know the science behind it better than me. So why not go 60? Why not create a way of life? A way of life. Not a religion. Not something I'm just doing. A way of life that that's naturally who I am. Everything I've been talking about goes, goes in line with this. When you feel uneasy. When you feel uneasy. When you're aware of that feeling that I'm on ease, I'm, I'm out of whack here. I'm diseased. I'm not at ease. I'm not in harmony. Something's going on here. What do I do? I, I relax. I slow my breathing. I drop down within. I melt myself in the chair. I drop down within and I encounter peace and tranquility. Well, that's my natural state of being. Well, the more I encounter that, the more I do that practice, this is my belief, 30 days, 60 days, the more it becomes a way of life. It naturally becomes who I am. The more I encounter myself, my true state of being, the more I experience myself, my true state of being, the more I experience myself, the more I know myself, the more I know myself, the more I be myself all the time. So here recently I, I went through a divorce. It had been going on for a while. <clears throat> Everything crashed down around me. I had to dissolve my business that I'd been talking about. That was from God. You know, this is from God. This is a vision, you know. What crashed. Everything crashed down around me. I had to file Chapter 7 bankruptcy. I was homeless for, for a while. I lived in an RV for a little while. And I don't think I told anybody any of this. I'm just getting real with you. And it was very painful, again, the things I was dealing with because... Through that, the manifestation of the things I'd feared, Job, it all came to light. It was all revealed in my life. I saw that I had an underlying belief, a very limiting thought and belief that I was going to fail at everything I did. And so I had set up safety, even safety nets. But when I fail this, I can go back to this. Well, what manifested that fear of failure? Did it have to manifest? Yes. I realized that I had, that I had manifested the very thing that I feared. Failure. Rejection. All those things. It was deep down in there now. So everything crashed down around me. And right at the time that I was learning the mechanics of manifestation and expression and, and, and idea and how it how it's conceived in our divine mind and brought forth it as expression and manifest its form, well, I manifested something that was that, that was so crazy it, it all crashed down around me. I ended up homeless. I ended up then I ended up living in an RV for a little while. Divorce, all you know, <laughs> and. And, and so down deep, there were all these limiting thoughts and beliefs that I had about myself that had to be dealt with so that I can experience the blessing of my latter years. And what's the blessing? What's my inheritance? What is that? What is the purpose? What is my purpose? What's to be me? That's it. The Christ. The unique expression of the one and only being that I am. And to be that freely. My only purpose, your only purpose is to be you. The true you. The authentic you. And to be free in that. So here recently, I've decided and, and through that now, I started to drink, you know, it started with a couple of beers. And I drink, you know, I was drinking the eight percenters and nine percenters, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, telling myself it's because they taste good. <laughs> and, and it got to where 
I was drinking two, three, four, five, even six of those every night. Home alone. <sighs> Poor, pitiful me. Working too hard, doing everything. I can't see my kids. And I'd go home and sit on the couch and drink and smoke and pass out every night. And down deep, it's so weird. I told myself, you're creating a habit. A habit that was not very healthy for me. Started to get indigestion again and then and 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 anxiety and uh and all these things, you know. And through that though, one morning, not not too long ago, I woke up and I said, you know what? Today's the day, today's the day to, to change. And how did I do that? First I acknowledged that it was all going on within me. I took the power back. I stopped justifying and blaming everything around me. I acknowledged it. I acknowledged it. And once I acknowledged, I acknowledged this, I took responsibility. I was aware what was going on. I acknowledged it. And then I consciously made a choice to, to change the pattern, to change the program. And I said, this is what I'm going to do from this day forward. This is the discipline. I even said, God, help me here. Help me. Give me the power, the desire again. Let's change this up. Because I want to burn forever. Burn, 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 burn. I want to continue to release and to teach and to help. To be on fire for people. For love. And I can't do that when I'm doing things that hinder that me this is my choice now I'm not saying I'm not I'm not condemning anybody that does I mean I'm not I don't think there's anything wrong with it now but it hindered me I caught myself not wanting to pray with people because I'd had a beer and they'd smell it on my breath and I was ashamed of it that me the, the guy you know Help myself not wanting to help people, not wanting to have people over, isolating, not being real. And I woke up and I said, you know what? I'm changing this up today. So now I'm waking up. It's 3.30 to 5.30, whatever, 4.30. I wake up early. I wake up early. I stretch. I begin my day by, by thinking being thankful. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Thank you for life. Thank you for this breath. Thank you that I can fill this bed. Thank you that I can stand up and walk today. Thank you for this roof over my head. Thank you that I have air conditioning. Thank you that I have running water. Thank you I've got food to eat. Thank you for those birds I hear out there chirping. Thank you for my dog that loves me. Thank you for my children. Thank you for our wholeness and our health. And, and what that does for me is it puts me in a, in a mood of gratitude. It evokes the feeling of gratitude. And gratitude attracts abundance. It just does. It's a good vibe that attracts good vibes because like energy attracts like energy. Now, will you get faced with the contradictions? Of course. You say something good, you're going to hear something bad. I mean, it just, you say something uplifting and encouraging you're always going to you know you're always going to get faced off with things but you're an overcomer all that all that failure in my life i looked at as failure you know what it was never failure because i never laid down i never gave up i've never given up i continue to get back up each and every day i've been knocked down beaten tongue lashed you name it get run out of towns reject it name it it's happened bankrupted, lost businesses, lost tons of money. I mean, you name it. But I don't, I have not laid down because it's not my nature. It's not my nature. I'm a finisher. I'm a winner. See, we, we, we got to, this, this is how it's got to happen. You don't lay down. You get back up. You never stop. You make that choice. This is how it's going to go down. Lay, write it out. This is what I'm going to do. And do it. Make a list and check it off. It feels good to do it. 
So I said, you know what? I'm gonna create. I'm gonna create. I'm gonna create healthy habits. I know how to do it, and this is. And I'm starting here. So what are we doing? Well, I wake up early. I start by gratefulness, thankfulness. Then I stretch a little bit. You know, I stretch. You ain't got. You ain't got to have a time limit. Stretch until you don't feel like stretching anymore. Why? It loosens the body. It prepares the body for that oxygen I'm about to bring in. That breath of life loosens everything up. You can get more oxygen to your muscles and stuff. And, and then I go into my breath work. This is my. This is me now. This is what I'm doing. This is my discipline. I've been doing breath work for, for I don't know, probably a year and a half now every day. I've missed only a few. It helps. I feel healthy. I feel good. I have more energy. I eat less. I'm eating clean. I chose to do this. Clean my clean version now. Eat a lot of meat. <laughs> so I'm waking up. I posted it up. 60 days. And it's just a way of life. It just continues. I wake up early. I've been waking up early for a long time. I can hear clearly early in the morning. I do my breath work. I sit. I meditate. I read something inspirational. I'm doing a course in miracles. I contemplate. I do these meditations throughout the day. It helps me to stay present. It helps me to be aware. I got a book I'm reading. So I wake up early. I stretch. I do my breath work. I read something that's inspirational that I can contemplate and meditate upon all day. See, I'm, this, this all helps to expand. I'm doing things. These are healthy habits. I exercise 30 minutes to an hour every day. I take off the weekends now. I'm eating clean. I eat clean. I've, tr I've decided to eat clean. What's clean to me? Removing sugars. Because I found that I was addicted to sugar. I don't want to be addicted to Jack, except for the presence, love, peace, harmony, joy. That power encounters, people encounters, you know. I want to be addicted to that. And I am. So I remove those things. <clears throat> Cold shower every day. Why? Do the research. It helps. We have, we've been so conditioned physically and mentally that we're not operating at full capacity. We're not using 100% of our vascular system. We're not, and therefore, 100% of the oxygen is not getting carried throughout to every cell. And the oxygen carries the memory of the divine. Oxygen, breath, life. It also carries the one thought and idea to every cell in your body. So we need to tap into all that vascular system, 100% of the mind, 100% of the body, vascular system, operating at full capacity. Well, I can't do that if I'm not healthy. I'm not healthy mentally, if I'm not healthy spiritually, if I'm not healthy physically, emotionally. Come on. And so for, for 30 days, that thing, that, 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 something happens in that period for me. I know that. I've tested it out. It's happened many times already. I know within that 30 days, something's going to happen. I'm going to begin to feel as if the things I've been doing are me. And then take it further. 60, continue on. And it becomes fixed. It becomes a way of life that you never, ever, ever have to leave. You just continue to expand and to grow. I know that was long. Had to get it out though, had to get real. Had to get real. But see, I chose now. I was still hearing God through all that. I was still talking and teaching and everything else. Still was. I wasn't dreaming as much. But there were certain things that, that, that I, I had stopped doing because of those things that I didn't like. So I chose to change it. I used the power, our power of consciousness. Your birthright is divinity. That is your inheritance. That's who you are. Peace. Love y'all.